I remember the book. What was it? What is it? There's, there's a, a walk, walk it, it in, in my, my pocket. It's a walk it in my pocket. And there's yeah. some rescuing in East Hampton. Exactly. It doesn't really That's run. pretty good. Okay. You know, rescuing an animal gives not just the animal, but the human new purpose. Yeah, absolutely. It works both ways. Mm -hmm. And it's not just dogs and cats who need help sometimes. The big animals, like horses, do too. That's what CT Draft Horse Rescue has been doing for more than a decade now. Marcy Jones is there live now to show us how. Hey, Marcy, how's Jack? Jack and Ingrid are both so perfect, you guys, and you're so right. It not only helps the horse, it also helps all of the humans here as well. And we often say that, you know, animals are just better than humans a lot of times just because they're so sweet and we're obsessed with them. And take a look at these faces. They're absolutely incredible. I'm here again with Stacy and Rob and our two favorite friends, Jack and Ingrid. So tell us a little bit about what you guys do here for anybody who hasn't heard of CDRH. So here at CDHR, we, our mission is to rescue, rehabilitate, and rehome. So that is our perfect plan and dream for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that doesn't work out, right. but that is our end goal. Um, so pretty much we go to auction okay. um, or we get surrenders from mm -hmm. owners or we've also been part of seizures from um, here in the state, in Connecticut, also Rhode Island, um, of cases of horses that had to be removed from their home. Okay. So that's how we've gotten our horses. Um, some of them, like we said, we hope to adopt them out. Some of them, we know when we get them, this is going to be their forever home. And right. that's usually due to medical cases, Okay. Um, which we tend to have a lot of, because right. that's what we go for, the ones that people don't go right. for. And tell us just some of the situations that our friends are coming from. So, for example, Jack and Ingrid here, they both came from an auction in Pennsylvania that okay. we went to. Um, it was full of draft horses and everyone always says, how do you choose? How do you do that? Right. Um, we often say they choose us. We don't choose them. Right. Um, Jack chose us when we saw he had a terrible hoof infection. Okay. Um, and we said, we hear you, buddy. We need to yeah. take you home. Um, Ingrid was the first horse we saw get off the auction that day. Mm -hmm. um, and when we saw her back right leg, it was another one. We said, we know right. we need to get her. Um, and ironically, her leg was about three times the size of that no when we got her. Um, oh, we can't cure her condition, okay. but we're gonna keep her comfy and take care of her the best way we can. Right. So that is their stories. Now is that, oh, is that difficult for you to take in a horse when you don't really know what they've been through? How do you even approach kind of their therapy or getting them to trust you? So we're big on letting them decompress when they arrive to the farm. Right. We get them situated into their paddock um, with pretty much hay and water, and we just let them be. Okay. Let them be a horse, probably for the first it's time. A brand new in place, a long time. brand new yep. people. Yep. yep. So that's our first step, and then we like to let them approach us, and then we can take the next mm -hmm. steps. And each of them have a different story, and they all play out differently. But different eventually, timelines. yes, exactly. Yep. There is no set schedule. Um, it's all on their terms, um, and eventually. They tell us most of their story. You yes. can put the pieces together. I bet you see some incredible things on a daily basis here. Inspiring, we do. <laughs> heartbreaking at times, but also yep. there's always that hope that another one is going to come in here exactly. and that you're going to give them a new lease Exactly, on life. and that's what we have to focus on. Yep. I love that. Yep. Now, I know a lot of people are probably watching this thing. Yeah. How can I help? How can I, <laughs> how can I you know, get in on this? Yep. What is the best yep. way for somebody at home to do that? Um, so. To be brutally honest, these are big horses and they cost a lot of money. Right. Um, so our monthly sponsors is a huge way that you can help. Even $5, okay. $10 a month will make a huge difference. Um, but the other big thing is to come volunteer. Yeah, It's a great way. We have lots of ways you can volunteer. Even if you don't physically want to work or can't work with the horses, we have fundraising committees. Uh, we have uh, maintenance committees. We have adoption committees. Mm -hmm. um, we have some people that come just to decorate for events or do some landscaping. So There's something for yes, everyone. Exactly. You can find a place exactly. and find a way to help make it yes, better for them. Absolutely. Oh, yep. that's yep. incredible. And if people want more information on how to get in with you guys, yep. what's the best way for them to do so that? So the best is go to our website. It's ctdraftrescue.org. Okay. And you can find all our information 
information there. Incredible. Thank you guys so much. Thank We're going to be back in just a little bit, guys. All right. Thanks, Morris. Yeah. Incredible stories coming out of that farm. It's just so hard to hear about their stories. And when they're on auction, sometimes, you know, they don't they don't make it. No, so. but I mean, how lucky are those horses oh, to be God. there, though? Jill and Ingrid. And I was telling you, too. I mean, Jack and Ingrid. I've, I've taken uh, George there, and he's done, like, horse grooming. Which right is where incredible. Marcy it's so is. therapeutic. Uh, yeah. And for kids to learn, you know, yeah. what it's like and how to be kind to an animal and what they get back to Absolutely. at such a young age.